Right, hi there. I just wanted to do a video looking at some of the programs and brochures that I've got from things such as plays, musicals, concerts even. You know, just a little look. I apologise for that noise. That is the chair I'm sitting on. Um, and I apologise for the <laughs> state of the walls. We've only been moved into this house a month and it needs decorating upstairs. So it would probably need replastering and stuff like that so the walls aren't very even. Not that you need to know that, but that's why they don't look great. So, it's also for calendars in this room. Anyway, so the first programme that I wanted to show you was uh, the programme from Pink's tour that we went to go see in 2009. I'd only been with my partner probably six months then, maybe. It was nine years ago, so it's, I can't think exactly um, when the concert was. But I do know it was in 2009, so. And I think we did find the tickets the other day, but. So yeah, I just want to show you, you know, just briefly, these programmes that I have here. It's not all the programmes I've chosen I've got, as that would take quite a while. But I'm going to go, I've got a pile here, and I'm going to go through them and see where we end up. So, as I say, the first one is Pink's brochure programme from her Funhouse tour in 2009. Now this one, as you can expect, it has glossy images, uh, photographs, various writing and stuff in it. It's not actually, it's more photographs and images than writing and text. Sorry I haven't actually prepared for this video so it's literally off the cuff. But yeah, I'll just show you a couple of images. It's mainly videos from music videos of hers and sort of photo shoots rather than uh, pictures from her actual show. Obviously I'm doing it to my uh, IMAX webcam so I'm probably holding these not the best, but anyway, we'll see. But yeah, just to give you a brief, you know, glimpse of the programmes. Obviously, with a concert, you can only say so much because people generally tend to know, obviously, the person's music. Many more people are likely to have been to a concert than um, a theatre performance. Obviously, because of the amount of people, you know, that they manage to put in uh, auditoriums and stadiums. Places, arenas. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, we went to see Pink on her Funhouse tour. It was 2009. Um, and it was... She was the first person we saw live. I think I'm right in saying that. Then we w went on to see Lady Gaga and Pink. But, sorry, Lady Gaga and Lily Allen. It's Pink I'm looking at now. But yeah. But yeah, it's mainly glossy images, you know, arty photographs, pictures from her albums. Uh, there's not a great deal of writing as I say, mainly for music videos, but all to support the Funhouse album and tour, which is sort of, you know, a very rocky um, album. Not more rock and such like that than pop. But yeah, it's mainly glossy images. I'm not keep repeating myself, I'm very well aware. So there, with band members. Oh, sorry about this chair. But yeah, that was 2009, that was Birmingham NIA, it was at the time, National Indoor Arena. Pretty sure it's changed its name now, but I can't think of the name, and I didn't actually research it, but, <laughs> but yeah. So it was nine years ago we saw Pink, and obviously does aerial acrobatic things in the performances, and her things isn't a great word to use, but yeah. Uh, yeah, aerial acrobatics, she's very, very active in shows, she's hardly ever stood still, she's always doing something, which is, you know, something of a difference for a performer. Obviously you have others, not that, not that I'm going to knock others, because obviously people such as Celine Dion or Adele or Whitney Houston, mind you, she was quite active, but, you know, um, certain ones are more static than others, but obviously that doesn't stop them being phenomenal. Right, so obviously the next one that I was going to mention is the Monster Ball, which was Lady Gaga, which was also the same year as far as I'm aware. Could have been the next year. Sorry about this. It was either 2009 or 2010. But yeah, this was uh, the tour we went to see. Obviously she played some out, uh, songs from Fame and some from Fame Monster, I think it was at the time. But yeah, that was her tour that we went to see. In this one, sort of a quick glance. Ah, uh, this is more sort of portraits and stylish photos yet again rather than pictures from the tour or 
live pictures. I'm sorry that this could potentially be, obviously that's from the Bad Romance video, or Bad Romance photo shoot. This could potentially be a long-ish video, but was that Bad Romance? Uh, you know, just wanted to show you. Ah, uh, it must all be Bad Romance, because obviously that's the end as far as I'm aware. Channeling Amy Winehouse by the looks of it. But yeah, um, that obviously, even though obviously there's no acrobatics or stuff like that as far as I can think back, she was still an incredible performer and an amazing singer live. Sorry about this chair. An amazing live singer and the sort of special effects and staging uh, that she had was incredible as well. Uh, we've wanted to see her since, but we haven't been able to for various reasons. But we would obviously love to because. As I say, she's such an incredible live performer. Obviously plays many instruments and just generally, you know, all around entertainer. So Lily Allen, we also saw 2009. Oh, sorry, Lady Gaga was at Manchester Arena, we saw her. With security, obviously, obviously now it's, um, I can't think of the word, but obviously now it's more anyway, with security, but on the doors, I needed, you know, medically actually needed to take this bottle of water in because uh, I need to keep hydrated for various reasons, you know, for health condition. But they would not at all whatsoever let me in with this thing, so we had to either bin it or put, pour it away. I can't remember what it was. I, was. I know the reason is obviously they don't know what's in it. It could be anything. But yeah, anyway, but she wasn't a particularly nice woman. Even after all these years, I can still remember what she was like, and she really wasn't a nice woman. But yes, that was at Lady Gaga at Manchester Arena. I'm sure they probably all have the opportunity to be like that. But yeah, this was Lily Allen. This was at Birmingham at the IA as far as I'm aware. These do actually have... Well, they're not... Um, poppy, pop-out pictures. But yeah, this will be an amalgamation of songs from both albums as well as new things no one has seen before. Obviously, she was more, as far as I'm aware, because I say we're going back nine years and certain things stand out in your mind, she was more static, I'm saying, I think she was. But yeah, she was possibly jumpy around the stage, you know, but in comparison to Pink, obviously, as I say, with the acrobatics, nowhere near. Photograph, well, not photograph, oh, sorry. Yes, photographs. You know, different things that she's written herself or, you know, words from herself. The interview with her in there, yeah, other images, interviews, but that was a great show, you know, regardless of whether, as I say, a performer is energetic or whether they stand still. If they have the talent, they have the talent. Right, on to a different one now. So we actually, uh, this is actually a play, we went to Stratford-upon-Avon, I think I think now it was February 2016, and I had, I'd never been before to Stratford on Avon. Oh, yeah, it was 2016. It was 400 years of his birth, and it was celebration year. I'd never been to Stratford Avon before. I always wanted to go, uh, but I'd not actually been a keen, you know, follower of Shakespeare. But um, after seeing this particular play, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I haven't seen Shakespeare since, I don't think. But I would love to. But yeah, A Midsummer Night's Dream, obviously plenty of people know uh, about it. Obviously you have Oberon and... Uh, can't remember the name. Don't know why. Completely got out of my mind. Let me just refresh myself. Somewhere. Titania, that's it. Of course it is. God knows why I couldn't think of that. But yeah, Oberon and Titania on the front cover. There we are. Oh, there we are. Cast list here. Now, I've actually seen Ben Goff, is it? Yeah, Ben Goff, who played. Oh, sorry about this. Who played Mustard Seed in A Midsummer Night's Dream. We've actually seen her since. Oh, we've never seen Shakespeare, of course we have. I know, is that. Shakespeare. I can't think now. But anyway, no, not Shakespeare. But yeah, we've seen him in The Hypocrite, a play at Hall Truck Theatre. He was also in that. 
um, and he's a great actor. As all of them are, obviously, you know, I'm not going to, um, what would you say, can't think of the right word, I'm not going to deride, if that's the even word, any of them, obviously, they're all marvellous performers, you know, incredible in what they do. And especially, what was her name, Lucy as Puck, she really was a standout performance. And the set, that is one thing that the RSC, obviously at many sets and staging of various different companies, performers, obviously it is, can be excellent. Sorry about this, I'm just going to think. But A Midsummer Night's Dream, that was spectacular. The, obviously it didn't have sort of special effects, obviously CGI because it's live. But the effects that they conjured up, you know, using real materials, you know, real action, in the theatre, just put you right in the centre of the story. You know, you felt like you were <coughs> in those scenes. But yeah, it's to be expected, obviously, from the Royal Shakespeare Company, that it's going to be something phenomenal. But you just don't realise until you're actually there. Sorry about that. I'm trying to do it to the camera. In um, in the theatre, how excellent you know Shakespeare really is. I know it's not for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people wouldn't get on with Shakespeare, don't enjoy Shakespeare, obviously can't understand it, but it really was superb. My first experience of Shakespeare, you know, it really was everything I could have wanted and more. It did actually go on tour to certain venues, I think, did it go to Bright Harbour Theatre? But I didn't get to go see it there, which was a shame. Um... And obviously many other places have done a production of it. But, yeah, and, you know, it's just a really, I know probably what I'm saying isn't making a lot of sense. But yeah, it's a really enjoyable show, it really was. So, another one, where are we? Just want to show you, do the loo, I think. Uh, this one here was Shakespeare the Complete, I have seen Shakespeare. Shakespeare the Complete Deaths. Now this is every death, I think it's 79? Uh, deaths from Shakespeare's plays. Yeah, there we are. Complete deaths. It's obviously done in sort of a parody type of way. Although parody is not the word I'm trying to think. Um, but yeah, it gets everything out of there. Like there's some rather wonderful uh, costumes. But yeah, what I remember about this is this was at Hull Truck Theatre, we saw it, and we were front row. And in one of the scenes, uh, I can't think what death it was, but the woman, woman, lady, actress, um, that was in the play, or in the show, she was in a giant, you know, these plastic blow-up, kind of what you call them, you know, you have them on water or... Um, things like that, you know, yeah, like clear balls anyway you climb into and roll about in. But she, I think, lost a bit of control of it and she ended up against Brian. But within the thing, she was in character inside the thing, so had shouting, Help me, help me, you know, literally staring uh, at the part of the front row. But they had done various shows, uh, not just Shakespeare, you know, they've done uh, their own versions of all sorts of shows, but they really are incredible. Spy Monkey is the group, if you look up them on Facebook or, you know, search them on the website or anything like that. Now, another one here to show you as well, The Woman in Black. We saw this at Stephen Joseph Theatre at Scarborough. At the time, it was actually a father and son playing, um, sort of, you know, the main two characters. Was it Arthur... Stips? Scripps? Something like that. I can't think. Kips. Sorry. Could be Kips. Yeah, basically, obviously, there's been two films as well since the original story. Um, I'll just open it up. Yeah, Arthur Kipps and his son in the show is sort of playing the actor, you know, he's auditioning for a role, but then, you know, it turns into, um, 
you know, a really good, decent... It's actually like a... Well, it is, in, in, a, in essence, a ghost story, a horror story. And obviously, yet again, you know, with the effects that they can create, you really do feel involved in the show, you know. I'm just going to, I don't want to get the um, premise wrong. Not premise, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so obviously, yeah. Yeah, it's a horror novel. This is about the book, but it's a horror novel by Susan Hill. Uh, Susan Hill, sorry. Written and starred traditional gothic novel concerns a mysterious spectre that haunts a small English town, heralding the death of children. And there's a television film, and then obviously there's been the play. Um, I'll just read this to you. Yeah, it says, The play of the woman of black was adapted by Stephen Malatrat in December 1987. The status of a low-budget uh, production... The new Christmas play in Scarborough turned out to be so successful when it arrived, that it arrived in London's West End two years later. Yeah. And it sees Arthur rehearsing with an actor in an attempt to perform the story to family and friends, which allows him to relive the haunting of Eel Marsh House as a play within a play. So, in essence, where are we? So we begins with Arthur Kipps, a retired solicitor who formerly worked for Mr Bentley. Uh, one night is at home with his wife and children who are telling ghost stories. When he has to tell a story, he becomes... Irritated and leaves the room and begins to write of his horrific experiences several years in the past. So while he was still a young junior, he was summoned by Crithen Gifford, which, uh, yeah, it's quite, I'll come back to me now, a small market town in the north coast, northeast of England, to attend the funeral of Mrs. Alice Drablow, and he is reluctant to leave his fiancée behind, but is eager to leave the London smog. The house is situated on Nine Lives Causeway, and at high tide is completely cut off from the mainland, surrounded only by marshes and sea frets. Soon realised more to Alice Drabbler than he originally thought. At the funeral he sees a woman dressed in black, with a pale face, dark eyes, from a group of children are st silently watching. While sorting through her papers at Eelmash House over the course of several days, he enjoys an increasingly terrifying sequence of unexplained noises, chilling events, and appearances by the woman in black. One of these is to hear the sounds of a horse and carriage in distress, closely followed by the screams of young children and the maid coming from the direction of the marshes. And it says most of the people in Crith and Gifford are reluctant to reveal information about Mrs Drabbler and the mysterious woman in black. Any attempts by Kipps to find out the truth causes pain, pained and fearful reactions. From various sources, Kipps learns that Mrs. Drabble's sister gave birth to a child, Nathaniel, because she was unwanted. She was forced to give the child to her sister, Miss Drabble, and her husband adopted the boy, and insisted that he should never know that Jeanette was his mother. Charles screamed that Kipps heard were those of his ghost. Uh, Jeanette went away for a year. When realising she could not be part from long from her son, she made an agreement to stay at Elmash House with him as long as she never revealed her true identity to him. She secretly planned to abscond from the house with her son. One day, a horse and carriage carrying the boy along the causeway became lost and sank in the marshes, killing all aboard, while Jeanette looked on helplessly from the window. After Jeanette died, she returned to Eelmarsh House in the town of Crith and Gifford as the malevolent woman in black. According to local tales, a sighting of the woman in black passaged, uh, sorry, presaged the death of a child. After some time, <laughs> but still years before the beginning of the story, Kipps returns to London, marries Star, has a child of his own, and tries to put the events of Crith and Gifford behind. At a fair, while his wife and child are enjoying a horse and carriage ride, he sees the woman in black, she steps out in front of the house and startles it, causing it to bolt and wreck the carriage against a tree, killing the child instantly and critically and injuring Stella, who passes away ten months later. He finishes reminiscence with the thing, they've asked for my story, I've told it enough. And it really was, it was incredibly well done. Obviously, he literally had, I'm pretty sure it was two actors throughout. Obviously, he did have the woman in black, and during the show, she came through the audience, you know, so you, you thought, oh, you know, you weren't expecting it, so you saw her come through the audience of the in black. There were screams, obviously in the show, like blood curdling screams, you know, really. There was a door that had a, obviously like a red mist behind it, and that, when it slammed, you know, it literally made you jump out of your seat. The special effects, as I say, that they created for the show was, you know, something else. And I don't think it was that expensive, because at the time, that was only in a 
you know, a smaller theatre. Um, I don't know, it's in the West End. But yeah, we absolutely loved that and it was just a great, you know, absolutely brilliant woman in black. Right, I'm not actually going to do too many more because this video is already 20 minutes long. So as I can tell. So, next one, obviously, near enough everybody has heard of this, Hairspray the Musical. Absolutely brilliant. Obviously about the oppression of black people mainly. You know, really at the heart of it. Um, obviously, it's predominantly a white school in a white era in the 60s. Yeah, white era. Predominantly white school, sorry. In, yeah, may, there wasn't a lot of black people about. Which now, obviously, looking back at this in hindsight, it, it can be an uncomfortable thing to think about, but it's an incredible show. And obviously people think, oh, it's Hairspray, it's a fluffy musical. You know, it doesn't deal with issues, but at, at its heart, it really does. Um, the song, I Know Where I've Been, obviously, is about, you know, the past and obviously the oppression they felt and, you know, striving forward, coming through it all, you know, despite what they've been through. And in the school in the 60s, I know this now, as I say, nowadays, looking back, is horrible, but once a day, uh, once a week, they have a day where everybody just come together, white people, black people, you know, they all come together. But in the end, through Tracy, which is the main character of the show, her perseverance, she manages to, you know, by the end of the show, and the film, and, you know, there, as I say, there's two films, I didn't say, but I'm just saying there. You know, she manages to get the TV network to, you know, integration. You know, integration so that there aren't black people are on TV. They're obviously with other white people and stuff like that. But yeah, so there's a lot of a negative against Tracy, obviously, for what she does. But it really is a great show. When I saw it, well, we saw it at... Um, a whole new theatre. It was before it was redeveloped, but yeah, we saw it. Leighton Williams was in the role as. I know it wasn't seaweed then, but he was, I think he was. Um, ah, I can't think of the name. He was understudy, but then later on it toured again, and he was playing the part of seaweed as the main. You know, he was. He wasn't the understudy then. But yeah, a TV show. You know, once a week. They had Black Bill and everybody on there. But in the end, you know, she wanted obviously integration, not segregation, I think she says, or something like that. Yeah, I'm saying that, and it's, I've just found it in the thing, in the programme. I should have brought my glasses up. I've got reading glasses. But yeah, at the time we saw it, there was Tony Maudsley as Edna Turnblad, which is always played... Uh, a woman always played by a man, Claire Sweeney, Peter Duncan from Blue Peter and various things, Brenda Edwards as Motorbath Maybell, and the song I'm aware of being, she was absolutely sensational and that. She got a fantastic voice. Freya Sutton was Tracy in the production we saw. But yeah, the songs, you know, stand out once to me. Good Morning Baltimore, uh, New Girl in Town, Mama Big Girl Now, I Can Hear the Bells, which is when she sees Link Larkin. Um, and she instantly falls in love with him as he's sort of the eye candy, would you say? Not eye candy, but you know, in the school, he's sort of the one that all the girls are after. But yeah, we saw it a whole new theatre, but it, it was on tour then and it's on tour now. I don't know how long it's got left of its tour, but if you do get a chance to see it, look up the songs from it, you know, even if you just want to go and listen to the songs. The songs are great, the performances are great. And, you know, the backstory about, obviously, separation, you know, and having integration, you know, everything is brilliant. Just, I think, one more. I oh, know, two more, maybe, for now. But Annie, obviously, a lot of people know Annie. We saw this at a whole new theatre. Um, Elizabeth Joseph was Miss... Oh, actually, sorry, I saw it twice. I first saw it when I went with my mum. We went to a whole new theatre and saw Leslie Joseph as Miss Hannigan. And then we saw it, me and my partner saw it at Sheffield Lyceum with. Oh no, sorry, that's the wrong way around. Yeah, that's the wrong way around. 
Me and my mother saw it with Craig Revel Harwood at Hull New Theatre, and me and my partner saw it at Sheffield with Leslie Joseph. And then obviously it went in the West End where it had Miranda Hart, Mira Sayal, um, I think Craig Revel Harwood did do it for a time in the West End, I think. But obviously, you know, it's the story that everyone knows. An orphan who was in an orphanage, Miss Hannigan is the orphanage leader, would you say? I can't think of the right name. But anyway, obviously, she eventually gets adopted by Dad, Daddy Warbucks and lives, obviously, a much better life than she had in the home. And many great things along the way for her. But yeah, from her beginnings that she has to go on to great things. Obviously, yeah, there we are. Yeah. Leslie Joseph. Oh, got it the wrong way again. Craig Rubble Harwood. But yeah, obviously, Hard Knock Life and this Tomorrow, you know, they're the big songs from it. But yeah, it was probably... Well, I would see Hairspray again. And as I say, I've seen, I have seen this twice. Oh yeah, there's a picture of that. This is there, the making of Annie. I'm trying to do this wrong. But yeah, um, as I say, pretty much everyone knows about Annie. They often manage to go on to big things. You know, she gets adopted by Daddy Warbucks. And, and she has a much better life than she did in the orphanage. So the last one that uh, I wanted to show you is a huge favourite among thousands of people, if not millions, well, it will be millions, is Wicked. Oh, there we are, Wicked. We went to see this a couple of years back at Bradford Alhambra Theatre, and it was just a sensational show. There are some truly amazing costumes in the in this show. You know, costume design. It um, tells a backstory. I'm just reading off here because I didn't want to, you know, get anything wrong. I just want to tell you exactly the backstory of the wonderful Wizard of Oz and what happened before Dorothy arrived in the land of Oz. And it tells the story of two unlikely friends, Alphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West, and Galinda, whose name later changed to Glinda, the Good Witch, or Galinda and Glinda, who has struggled through opposing personality viewpoints, rivalry over the same love interest, reactions to the wizard's corrupt government, and ultimately um, Alphaba's, bear with me, ultimately Alphaba's public fall from grace. But yeah, it, it's a huge smash in the West End. I don't know how many years it's been in the West End now, but you know, I know. There's another YouTuber and, and Twitter user and various, and she's seen it. I think she must have seen it 18 times now in the West End. And I think she's seen it when it goes on tour as well. But she is a huge, 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 like, fangirl over it. You know, she knows every actor, and she's seen, you know, when they've changed actors, she's been there. Literally, you know, obsessed with it. But, yeah, it is an incredible show. We loved it. As I say, it's two years ago now we saw it. Um, it was on tour then, but it, we went to see it at Bradford, Bradford. Oh, it is tour on. It, has, it is on tour now, sorry. It's, it's at Leeds this week, or has been last week. Yeah, we saw it when it was on tour last, and it was the only Yorkshire venue in Bradford, and this time it's on tour. Leeds is the only Yorkshire venue, I suppose, I'm aware. But yeah, if you can get a decent look at that picture, I know it obviously pictures only show you, you know, a decent thing, especially when this camera isn't the best with my computer. But the costumes, the performances, the music, really is superb, you know, over like there, Fiero, um, Madame Morabil, Morabil, and, uh, I can't the name at the minute, you yeah, know, obviously, Galinda, or Glinda, and Alphaba, there, but yeah, that really is a stunning show, I know I haven't probably seen it. Christ, I'm sorry about this chair. Probably haven't said anything too different than you already know about Wicked, but if you haven't seen it, then I thoroughly recommend, you know, if you love a good song, a good plot, and some phenomenal performances, costumes, 
even the lighting, you know, the lighting and the dragon at the top of the, um, above the stage, can't think what it's called, but above the stage, uh, you know, I really do recommend. So that was Wicked, Pink, Lady Gaga, Lily Allen, The Woman in Black, Hairspray, and Annie. As far as I'm aware, I don't think I missed anyone out. Yeah, that's the ones for today. If you have watched, thank you very much.